Good morning to you all and welcome to First Nations Now. I'm your host, Judy Phillips. Before I introduce this morning's guest, I'd like to take a moment to send out some congratulations. Recently, three Albertans were selected as recipients of the 1997 National Aboriginal Achievement Awards. They are Gil Cardinal, a film and television producer and director, as well as law and justice contributor Chester Cunningham, and Olive Dickinson, who is a writer and historian. Once again, congratulations to you all. Now back to the topic at hand. My guest this morning is a multi-talented individual, has worked with as a child care worker and guidance counselor for about 10 years. For the last 20 years, he's been lecturing on Native culture. He's also an artist specializing as a silversmith. And to top it all off, he's a musician who's been performing on the Native flute for almost three years. Please welcome my guest, Eagle Child, as he gives us a sample of his musical talent. thought that was great. We'll have a lot more when we return after this short break, so stay with us. If you're just tuning in, we've got a particularly interesting individual with us this morning with way too many credentials to mention. Please welcome Eagle Child. Thanks for joining us this morning. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. First question I have to ask, your name, Eagle Child. Tell <clears throat> us all about that. Well, um, when I moved out of Edmonton, I moved down to Calgary. And uh, I was involved with a school down there. It was uh, Plains Indians Cultural Survival School. I, I got to be the president. It's a, a program, alternative program, half cultural, half academic. So as a result of the cultural part, I got to be involved in all the ceremonies and uh, you know, all the cultural things that went on there. and. Uh, in came this medicine man, so uh, he was a Soto, Soto medicine man. So I went to see him and approached him as a teacher. And uh, it was through this man that uh, uh, went through a ceremony, uh, involved a pipe ceremony, uh, involved the waking of a pipe, which I carry. And also uh, during the ceremony was a naming ceremony. and. Uh, what had happened through, through explanation, what they, how they told it to me, was the spirit of the bald eagle that came in and left the name Eagle Child. And there I was. But it's legal too, you were telling well, me. Well, yes. Uh, I am with the uh, uh, Saddle Lake Band. And on the treaty card, there's a, there's a place for alias. And for me, it was a place for my native name. So I came back, slipped it in there, and now it's my legal name. Excellent. And that's the name that you go by all the time? Yeah, all the time. Okay. On to other things. I was mentioning all the credentials that you have. You've led a very interesting life so far. <laughs> Child care worker, guidance counselor, artist, musician. Tell us a little bit about that. How, how you went on this path. A little bit of a few stories along the way as well. Well, it, you know, as I grew up, I was really involved with athletics. Uh, I was basically known as a jock like that. Um, very, very involved in, in, in the amateur sport. Uh, university football. Uh, I was. I played junior junior baseball like that. And um, in hockey, I was Chicago Blackhawk property when I stopped playing. Really? And I, yeah. It was, and that part was it was a retirement. I just like hung them up, and that was it. Okay. And you also played here though for the University of Alberta. Yeah, Is that I right, played. Football? Yeah, two years at the university here, in which Excellent. I have an, an education degree. I'm a high school phys ed teacher, guidance counselor type person, and that's where the child care came in. As, excuse me, as I was um, 
finishing my degree, I was very much involved in child care when I was in Calgary. Worked in juvenile institutions there. And, um, but eventually, I um, pulled away from the institutions and I was doing private contracts from the government. And uh, it just evolved. I just, it took me out of there. And you know, on, the, on the off side, I started you know, being more involved with the Native culture. It started coming into my counseling with Native children and with Native families. And I started designing jewelry. Mm -hmm. This, that's an offside, you know, that, yep. that sort of thing. And then uh, and I had these two different business cards, and the last thing I had on there was designing jewelry. And it became the first on the list. I just, yeah. like I said, I just looked at this piece of jewelry, and I had designed it, and then uh, another ring. And uh, I said, well, I could do that. And then I went to this old fellow down in South Calgary, and uh, he just, over and over, over and over. And I was ready with the designs, and um, actually kind of surprised him, you know, he just after teaching me like So this that. is all silversmith work that all you do. We're going to take a quick look. I don't know if the cameras are ready to go take an up close look. I don't know if I should touch that. Are we all set up? That one's okay. Tell us a little bit about this, this well, first piece. You know, I, within the jewelry, I, I can say I express what I understand on the basis of the, of the native culture in terms of my teaching. This one kind of explains it kind of a little bit good. Uh, the three I have going in this one line represents the directives of the Great Spirit. Look mm -hmm. after the body, the spirit, and the mind. Okay. And then when we take it all together, it represents the gifts, which are the four elements of life, which are water, air, earth, and fire. So this kind of thing is, is evident throughout, you know, uh, the artwork that I do. You know, plus I also teach about a medicine wheel, and uh, it has the, I use a deer for the south, and a bear in the west. Okay. Off the um, north. That's on this east. piece right here? Yeah. This, this, is, very, can, this is very, very detailed. So I don't know if our cameras are up nice and close because this is a bear. A bear, and then I'm just going to use this pen. I don't know if you can see it. This is an eagle. That's the eagle. Okay. See, and then it goes and with the medicine wheel. Yeah. Even wheel. when you see it, it's, it carries a circle thing. There's the bear in the west. In the north, it's the buffalo, but it has you know this teaching: mm -hmm. why spirit mind. And then the eagle is in the east, and then the deer is in the south. Okay. Uh, and you sell these pieces too, right? Yes. <laughs> now, does everything that, uh, oops, this is going to fall. It's not going to stay where it was. Do all of your pieces of uh, silver have significance to them? Well, like I say, you know, it is about the teaching of the native culture, and it just, it, it's an art expression. So then it gave me the opportunity to be able to share, another opportunity to be able to share what I know about the native culture. Okay. So. You also do lectures on native culture. Well, How did you get involved in that, and, and where do you pick up? you know, your, your teachings? Well, you know, oddly enough, uh, you know, my first dealing with a medicine wheel was in a university course. I was, like, forced to write a paper on this medicine wheel. So, I, you know, oddly enough, like I said, uh, the, that particular wheel is Cheyenne, and I use mostly that, but uh, I've been able to add, with, in my travels and other medicine wheels, um, to be able to put some other colors in, in each direction, like that. It's like the south, okay. it's red, but it can also be green. Okay. And then, in the West, it's black, but it can also be blue. And I enjoy that because in my working with kids, black is a really, it's a really hard color to deal with. And uh, usually kids can't handle that. I find that. And I usually sleep in a blue for them, you know, for as far as colors concerned. Where did you learn about these? Uh, well, um, teachers come in many forms. You know, I've had, you know, some medicine people, some elders as teachers. Uh, a rock can be a teacher. You know, books. Uh, it's just being open to that kind of understanding. It, just being open more than anything else. And uh, it's like when the student is ready, you know, the teacher will appear. And, and it, like I said, it comes in many different forms. Okay. I have to ask you, uh, you said that you took some teachings of the Cheyenne and that sort of thing. If you're from Saddle Lake, that would make you a Cree. Uh, just out of curiosity, it seems like a lot of the, the, uh, the stories and the learnings that you have are Southern. From other nations. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, even within the native culture, there's these really neat little sayings. In the native culture, we're very aware of nature. And not only do I deal with, you know, other native nations and, their, and what they have to offer, but also other nations of the earth. So it's just a total opening to, you know, the, to the whole planet. And I find that Tibetan Buddhism is so close to the native culture. It, it's almost a duplicate. And the real differences come from where they are geo, geo, geographically, mm -hmm. like that. But everything else is so close. 
uh, very much connected to color and you know the whole it's just it's amazing it really is amazing mm -hmm. you you started out working in uh, I guess institutions so to speak mm -hmm. and you're so you seem to be so far away from that now what uh, what well, was that uh, I must tell you that you know I do have a, um, a I don't know a stubborn outlook in terms of education is concerned. Even when I got my degree, I, you know I look at these school situations now and they admit to you that they teach you to use 10 percent of the brain at the most. I have a little trouble dealing with that. <laughs> I would think you know? so. Okay. And uh, the, the other part about my education, even as a native person, is it was this mirror thing. I kept looking in this mirror and saying, "Well, this is this native person and." You know, what is this? And then again, being opening uh, you know, to what it is. And I mean, I, exposure to Native people all the time, even when I was young. Yeah. So I, it was always an interest. Matter of fact, when I was young, it scared me. You know, there was so much magic, and I was a little concerned with people hurting other people. Yeah. And when I finally decided, well, okay, it's the same energy that hurts that heals, it's just how you use it. And with that, it, the whole door opened for me with the Native culture. Uh, the, you know, my spiritual commitment, the name, you know, the path that I took, and it was almost like my own guidance system was saying, well, okay, and it was like a cheering, we've got you. And my commitment to the Native culture, you know, it just unfolded like that. That's great. I was talking about your accent. It doesn't sound like a Canadian accent. <laughs> but we're going to take a commercial break first. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, and we're going to talk a little bit more about your flutes, the two of them, and the special names that they have. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Joining us this morning is Eagle Child. One thing that we forgot to mention and some of our crew members have noticed is the necklace that you're wearing, the piece on that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it gets back into the, into the basic teachings of what I do in dealing with the body and the spirit and the mind. And then the four representing the gifts. And it goes through, throughout the whole piece. And in my understanding of learning is that we learn through repetition. I mean, even though I was a silversmith, it was kind of over and over and over again. And there are, there's another number that I work with, <coughs> excuse me, and it's two. Uh, the two represents choice. Um, we're always given what we need, we're just here to make the choice. Mm -hmm. And even understanding this whole planet is a gift. So it's, it's all here, it's been here for millions of years, and we're just here to learn how to use it in a good way. Hopefully. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I, I, I haven't spoken to you for very long, but you seem to, to, to <laughs> deal with things on a different level, you know? You look at it from a different perspective and a whole fresh new outlook on it. Well, you know, it is about being positive and, and understanding that, you know, it's about raising the vibrational level. It's what I call 3D. And the 3D, there's always a winner and there's always a loser. And when we as a people, or even the Earth, as we are extensions of the Mother, is trying to raise her vibration so that everybody wins. So it's a win-win situation. So. Okay. One thing that I did want to talk about is your accent. I think that you've got an American accent. Well, <laughs> Where did that come from? Because I've been down there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I don't know. I, you know, even when I was growing up, I, I never had this, this connection to E-H, which is the A. A. And, uh, or Cha. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess in one sense for me, it was just being more aware and listening to what I'm saying. And for me, I just didn't, it wasn't a question of saying, well, I don't like it. It's just that I just didn't want to have it in my vocabulary yeah. like that. So it was an exercise in self-awareness. So. Okay. But right now you do, you are located in the U.S.? I'm in Las Vegas. Okay. Yeah. How did you end up in Las Vegas? Well, that's sort of like a, I ended up in Las Vegas because I escaped from L.A. I really feel, okay. <laughs> I'm serious, I really feel that I, sca I escaped from there. I really feel that, you know, um, it's a beautiful place in terms of the weather and the sort of things to do like that. But I also feel that um, the crime level is really high there. And like, I must say, and I say to a lot of people, you can, you can get shot at any time yeah. anywhere around there. So, I mean, that's not a good advertising for L.A., but at the same time, you know, it's what I felt, and I really felt I escaped from there. Okay. But previous to that, I was I was in Arizona in a very special place called Sedona, and um, it was actually the place that I went to when I left when I when I left Canada mm -hmm. was to go there. And it's a again, it's a very special place. I don't really like what they've done. They've they've had so much commercialization there. Um, 
they really have done a number on a really beautiful area. But at the same time, uh, I know I'm going to go back and, and I hold a vision for a really large project that I would really like to start there and yeah. be involved with it. We were talking about that. Did you want to discuss a little bit further what you're... What your well, you know, it's, it's living light properly. It's, it's making a building um, comfortable to live in. And more than anything, as a native person, it would be round. I find that because I work with the energy levels and motion and that, and that sort of a thing, um, it's, it's the reason why Native people have round teepees and the round sweat lodges. Energy doesn't get caught up. There's a flow of energy. So it's, it's, that's part of it. And it involves the electrical field, it involves a restaurant which is eating, you know, and a menu where um, you can get a taste of what we used to eat but something that's really good for us. Yeah. So out there, there are experts in all these different fields, and I would just love to gather them together and say, well, this is how we should do it. This is how it should be done. And it also involves this big art center, a healing through art center. I find that art is a very special um, situation where it brings the inside out. Yeah. And native culture is so much, it's so centered around the heart, that's where it comes from, to bring the heart outside. Exactly. Talking about bringing things out, um, the flutes that you have. How did you get involved in that? Well, uh, even the history of the flute, it's, it was given to the native man to play love songs to the female. And when I received my first one, there was a fellow I knew there, and I was involved in a relationship, so he felt it was very apropos. So he just handed me this flute, gave me this flute as a gift. And uh, I thought, wow, this is, you know, I mean, it was really a nice gift, but it didn't really excite me. I wasn't like, I think, wow, I finally got my flute. It was, you know, because I had seen flutes there. Yep. It was an instrument that was more, more known down south than it is up here like that. Um, and it just sort of sat for a while, and then I kind of like started playing a little bit. And there is a, quite a famous um, flute player down there, um, R. Carlos Nakai. He's really, he's very good. Okay. Well, you know, it's not a point of competition, but he's, he's an excellent flute player, and I just... It started to influence me because I'm self-taught. I would play along with this tape, and you know. So, and then one night, it was like a bolt of lightning. I was sitting on the back. It was dark, and my fingers just started moving like I, you know, all those years of typing in high school sort of paid off. Oh, that's great. <laughs> now you have two different flutes here. Can you explain the difference between them? Well, just by name, and oddly enough, you know, it's a male and female situation, and that comes in within the teachings that I work with as well. I'm, I was told that the struggle in life is with n nobody but self. And in that struggle is the balancing of the male and the female energy. And oddly enough, right now, you know, the flutes that I have are both, they're male and female. They have a male and a female name. Um, but uh, more directly, they came from, you know, my mother and my father. You know, okay. this one's Josephine and the other one's Theodore, which is my father's middle name, so. Okay. What is the other difference between <clears throat> You were saying that they have different keys, or...? Well, you know what, I, I can say I'm self-taught, I don't know a lot about music, but I know enough to be able to um, talk to other musicians to be able to get them. If I'm going to play with them, they have to retune the guitar or, or something like that. It's just, it's, I play on what's called a pentatonic scale. And uh, this one is in F and the other one is in G. Okay. So there is a difference in the sound, for sure. Okay. You do a lot of, uh, I said, lecturing. You do, you perform at various functions and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Well, the lecturing has sort of like subdued a little bit, but I still have the opportunity when I play the flute. I've done concerts and weddings and private parties and, you know, that sort of thing. And, and every time I get to play the flute, it allows me to open up to something, you know, to that kind of a teaching. So That's good. No, and it's too no. bad that the lecturing is wound down a bit because, I mean, just, just talking to you for the brief time that I have, you know, I've... I'm very inspired. You've given me a whole new outlook, <laughs> well, different perspective on things, definitely. Yeah. It'll come. It, you know, <clears throat> for me, in, in my own guidance and the way that I'm being directed to do things, um, that was even part of the training. I mean, I, a long time lecture. It was like about 22 years. And then I was given this other vehicle. Like, first of all, I went into the, into the child care and dealing with kids and families. Then I went into the artwork. And <clears throat> now it's in the, uh, in the music. And definitely to, to take those kind of understandings even then and make it even more practical, you know, to have a real example of how we can do things okay. in the right way. We're running out of time. I would really like to thank you very much for being on the program with us this oh, morning. Oh, thank you. And thank I wish you. you all the luck in your future endeavors. If anybody would like to get a hold of you, 
Um, they can contact me directly here and I will pass on the information to Eagle Child. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to First Nations Now. You know the drill, so grab that pen and paper. It's time for our calendar. Don't forget about the soup and bannock lunches that are available at the Canadian Native Friendship Centre every Tuesday and Thursday. As well, there is a Native Elders Soup and Bannock every Wednesday at noon in Cottage E, 10107 134th Avenue. Dream Speaker's first annual Aboriginal Youth Talent Search is fast approaching. The search will take place in Edmonton, March 15th, then in Calgary, March 16th. For more information, please call 471-1199. If you have trouble speaking in public, you can polish your communication skills by taking part in the Vision Speaker's Native Toastmasters Club. The club meets every Wednesday night at 7 at Grant McEwen's downtown campus in room 7.158. The First Nation Forestry Program is sponsoring a conference entitled Aboriginal Business Partnerships in Forestry on February 26th and 27th in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. For more information, if you're in Manitoba, call area code 204-983-4816, in Saskatchewan, 306-953-8545, and in Alberta or the Northwest Territories, please call 403-435-7270. And because of so much interest, here once again is some information and the address for the Tribal Image Model Search. For any ladies interested, you must send two clear pictures as well as a $25 registration fee to Tribal Image, Box 353-3-11, Bella Rose Drive, St. Albert, Alberta, T8N5C9. Entries will not be processed without pictures or registration fee. The search is advertised in the latest edition of Alberta Sweetgrass and Saskatchewan Sage. For more information, you can call 460-4533 or fax 460-4483. Deadline is March 31st, 1997. And once again, don't forget that if you have an announcement you'd like air on the program, get it to me early. 5325 Allard Way, Edmonton, Alberta, T6H5B8. And that wraps up our program for this morning. Once again, I'd like to thank Eagle Child. If you have any inquiries, please direct them to me. Until next week, you take care.